reminds me of a Boston fern. Um, I, I, I did not look it up. So if it's not a Boston fern, I'm, I apologize for that. But it, it reminds me one that grows out of the ground. And this was pretty nice because it had that little arc, the arch right there with it. I'll pull up a little bit. Okay, so I will get my uh, paintbrush. I'm going to be using a number 12 flat. Flat brush, the square. Uh, the one stroke Donna Dewberry brush. The colors I'm going to use are Classy Green. And these are all multi-surface. I have some classic green, uh, citrus green. And then just for variety, I'm going to uh, probably stick my brush every now and then into daffodil yellow. And moon yellow. Yeah, I just realized I don't have white on here. I don't think we need it. I'm going to add a touch of floating medium as well. Because these fern petals or leaves take quite a bit of paint. So I might need that to be able to finish the stroke. Start out with the two greens. Dip into the one corner. I'm double loading into the other corner and then going back on the, my palette, which I call this the runway. We go back and forth okay the only two steps basically until we get to the filbert brush is um, a chisel edge stroke and the comma and daisy stroke so just briefly because i know those are very common strokes but just for those that are new or haven't oh God, I, I can't think of the word like being successful on making a straight line or something like that uh, this might be helpful to make the stem for a vine, we use our, uh, the chisel of our flat brush. Our brush handle is straight up and down. And if you want a dark green vine, you would leave with the light color. The, the second color that comes along the brush is the dominant color. And that's what I want. I want a darker green vine. So I'm going to lead with the light green. If I wanted it reversed, I would leave, leave with the dark green. My brush is just going to be on the chisel edge and I'm applying very little pressure and I'm just going to uh, glide on my chisel just like this. There's no pressure. And that thickness is what I'm going to be using for the fern on all of them actually, for the fern stems. Now, if I wanted a little wider brush, I do the same thing, but I just press a little harder. I press and then pull still. If you notice, I'm using my whole arm. I'm not resting my arm on the paper or on the table. And I'm ex straight up and down. My handle brush is straight up and down. And then for wider, I just press real hard. Still on the chisel going straight using my full arm. So that's a chisel edge stroke. No pressure medium pressure, and a lot of pressure. And that's what I call brush control. So when you're painting and you need to paint like a st stem or vine, like what we're going to do, think of how do you get that thin line. It's little to no pressure on your chisel edge. Okay. Now for the, the comma or daisy stroke. Daisy stroke is also starts on the chisel edge. I put my brush straight up and down on the chisel. I'm leading with my light color because I, I want a dark petal look. And the, the mantra that we say is we push. I said, I'm pushing my brush down. That's the push. I'm going to pull toward me. And as I pull, I'm lifting, lifting, lifting up onto the chisel edge. And if you remember a while back ago, I, I mentioned it's like when I lift, I'm, it's almost like I'm on an airplane. So let me do it again. I push, I pull, and I lift. But as I lift, my light green's coming off the paper. My dark green is what's staying on the paper. And that gives me that nice little point. Now, this one was a medium pressure uh, stroke. 
normally I, I teach with no pressure than medium, but I wanted you to see this. I wanted you to see the roundness that you get with the push. And by picking it up, by the lifting, we get that nice little point. That This is going to be important for the fern. But if I were to go back and do no pressure, we use this stroke too. This is little no pressure, push, pull, lift. This is the kind of stroke that you might use with your stock flowers. Okay, and now I'm going to push real heavy, push down. There's my push, here's my pull and my lift. And this is when I need to make a wide like daisy stroke or even like this fern that we're going to be doing. I might get up to this, excuse me, up to this point. This is Y. So here's brush control. No pressure, medium pressure, full pressure. Okay, and then, now let's do a comma. It is, it's like a daisy stroke, but it has a slight lean to it. The mantra for this is push, lean, pull, and lift. I'll go ahead and do the medium to start so you can see it better. Here's my push. Here's my lean, I'm leaning, I'm painting this to the left, so I'm going to lean to the left, and then I'm starting to pull it also to the left, and now I pick up to the chisel. I'll do that a little faster, and I won't get that little glob right there. It's push, lean, pull, and lift. Push, lean, pull, and lift. Okay, you do the same thing, but go in the opposite direction. Push, lean, pull, and lift. Push, lean, pull, and lift. So we'll be doing some of those two on our ferns. Okay, so that's the basic strokes we're going to be using. And now let's go to the fern. And like I said, the first fern I'm going to paint is this one. Now y'all might think I cheated. And I sort of did. <laughs> I made a pattern. But there was, a, there was a purpose for this pattern. I wanted you all to see when you're painting this that it's, a, it, that it's okay to map out your project on your, on your surface. Now, most of the time when you get going and you, you're comfortable with your, your flowers or in this case the fern or whatever, all you want to do is chalk in your center stem and that's most likely what you need to do but for this case i wanted to show how you have to think about the fern how wide it is you when you're painting this you want to make sure one side isn't like one finger wide and then this side is like three fingers you know you want to if you're looking at a full force like this or full face you want to be able to see the full fern equal sides and so to do that, after you draw your center stem, you could with your chalk just map out how wide do I want this fern? Because if you start painting at the top and then you get wider, 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 you might be too big when you get to the bottom. So it's totally okay to map out your uh, projects, um, the piece that you're gonna paint. So, okay, so here's, here's how I map it out. And for this case, for this project, my, my middle here in the fern was two fingers wide. That's what I wanted. So when I drew these little dotted lines, I did two fingers. And then, of course, then I wanted it this long because I was on an eight by 10 canvas. First thing I'm gonna do is draw the stem. I'm leading with the light green and I'm making that line, that chisel edge stroke. So I'm gonna to touch right here, and I'm just gonna bring that stroke all the way down. It's the, the little pressure stroke. I'll just go over a couple times. Now, if you can't, can't do it in that whole um, brush load of paint, then you may need floating medium. Two things, you're either not enough paint or you need floating medium. Okay, so I'm gonna double load. My first, my first stroke is at the top and it's just going to be a small daisy stroke. So the daisy stroke was touch, lean, pull. I just went right, right there on the stem. Then now I'm gonna work down the fern. 
And the, when I do this, I'm going to do comma strokes. This one's going to lean into this way. And I'll put this here so you can see. This one's going to lean here, and this one's going to lean in this direction. Now, I want these to touch. So when, when I paint this side, push, pull, lift, there's my point. I'm going to have this one come and meet it right there. So I'm going to now walk down the fern. And because I mapped it out, I don't have to worry about, am I getting too wide, too big, anything like that. And if I go over my line, it's okay. <laughs> you know, ferns are different sizes. So I push, what is it? Uh, push, pull, lift. Push, pull, lift. So these go pretty fast. I'll, I'll go fast, but um, I'll check to see if I need to repeat something here. And I know um, I, I got a lot of paint on here. I, I'm going sort of fast, faster than normal for me. But to me, it, it's fine for the ferns. You know, they're, they're nice and lush in the forest. Just keep going down the, the stem here. I probably shouldn't have done this 8 by 10 but that's okay. It's gorgeous. I just love it. I love these two colors together. I'm using classic green and citrus green. Gosh, they're pretty. Because, you know, like I said, I I, I um, put some yellow and um, daffodil yellow and moon yellow, but, but I just love this. I don't think I need to add any colors to this. I'm, I'm always going back to my palette, and I, I am going back and forth on this, because I do want that nice chisel edge. And then I'm, I'm going to stop right here, because I'll show you what I'm going to do with this fern. And the, now I'm using that full pressure, you know, I was told, telling you about at the beginning. Now, I'm still on the number 10, and you can see, with the number 10, I'm still making these huge... Uh, petals right here. I had the small ones up here, but I got some big ones down here. I'll do one more and then stop on this. Okay. Why I stopped is a lot of times when you see ferns, they have they have these nice, nice big ones up here at the top, but then they have little scrunchy ones down here. And that, that just makes some interest that, that you don't have the same um, size going all the way down. So to do that, all we're going to do is to change the angle of our daisy strokes or our comma strokes. For example, um, this one's going to come out and it and this isn't going to have a angle as much. It's more of a daisy stroke where it comes out straight like this. And then I'll have another one come down here and come up. And I'm just following, actually for this, I just followed the pattern that's in the book. I didn't, I haven't made up anything for myself. This is all just copying out of the book. And I'm just making little daisy strokes here, coming down. I got a lot of paint, that, that's why they're a little big right now. And really don't keep doing it, because look, look how I got light. You really want to have see some of that darkness in there. So I added a little bit of green on my brush. Now I don't like this right here. So what you do is you could just come back, get more paint, and I'm going to make another comma stroke and fill that in right there. There. So there you got that one. This one I and I was going to make pictures as comments on the video. So my fingers were two fingers wide. And this, what we used were the daisy strokes and um, they were slight comma strokes. I didn't do a lot of curving on that. And I used a number 10 brush. So that's the first fern. So that one's, I'm gonna move that one off to the side, let it dry. And now I'll go get the next. This is gonna have something new in it because this one, we're gonna do this curve. So, Again, I made my pattern. Move this canvas uh, out of the way as well. So here's the picture. 
here's my pattern. So as you can tell, it's wider down here. So it was like two fingers wide. And then it got this outside edge got thinner, 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 thinner until I came around the curve. And then this is the whole width of the whole fern is like one finger. So it get it, it got really, really smaller. Still, I use the number 10 brush. And I am going to start at the top. But you know what? I'm going to wipe some of this excess paint off. Um, just because I have so much paint from that other um, project there. Okay, I'm going to go back into my paints and double load. I might, for a variety, add a little moon yellow to the citrus green side. Okay, how I paint this is I start at the top and then I move down. And because I don't really paint backward or upside down very much, I am going to turn my project around where I'm painting toward me. Now my first stroke is right there at the top. Oh, you know what? I need to paint my stem. Let me do that first. You, you got to do that. So I'm just doing that chisel edge, but I'm trying to be careful making my turn. I need to get more paint, making my curve. And remember what I say, think of a railroad track that the light colors, the engine and the back colors, the caboose, and they want to stay on the same track. There you go. Okay. So my first stroke is going to just be a typical Daisy push, pull, lift. Now, all of these ferns are painted the same way that I painted that other fern. They have that slight bend. As I come down, it's more of the, a slight bend of a comma stroke. So they're bending this way. So they have to bend that way when I start. So see, these strokes, even though they're very, very little, they, st they still could have that little bend right there. So how I, how I would do that is, and I want to stay now within this little guidelines that I made. So I'm going to push, pull, lift, and push, pull, lift. So they're, they're more of a straight, they're not out with a big bend, they're more straight. So let me do my next one. And I still want to aim that they joined together at the stem. So the next one is push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift. And I got a little bit out of the, the guideline and that, you know, that's okay. So I'm just going to do that. But this one, you got to be careful that you don't get too big and too curvy because we wanted to get we wanted to start it thin and then we want to go get bigger as we go around the curve. Okay, and I'll show you how the bend, what happens at the bend. So let me do my next one. Yeah, I'm way out of the line. So our, our fern will be a little bigger. There we go. Okay, so here I'm still coming from the outside, pulling in. Okay. I'm going to go back to doing this side first because I like to do this side first so I can see how much of an angle this one has to be. Because see, I want now this stroke, my next stroke, to be close to this one but end at that point. That's my, that's my meeting point. So to do that, I'm actually, let me pick up, I actually overlapped it a little bit. So this side is going to be more open, flared out. This side, they're going to be touching and overlapping. So here's my next stroke here. And then when I do this one, I'm still, I want to end right there at that point. So my brush has to start here and I push, pull, lift, and I end right there. Let me do this one. Same thing. I want to end right there. So I want to start right here and push, pull, lift. I'll stop a minute so you can see. Can you sort of see how I'm making that angle? These are all hugging each other, sometimes overlapping, and these are getting more and more 
separated as I go around this bend. I'll do a couple more this way, but then I, I then I can paint facing the right way. So here, push, pull, lift. This one, again, I'm overlapping because I want to end at the same point. This one I'm coming out. Here's the end point. So I want to, I need to overlap again because I'm making that curve. Come out this way and then this way. So now I'm almost done with that curve. So I'm going to almost be at a point where my petals aren't going to be overlapping each other. And I'm going to now start getting into the bigger strokes. And like that one I just did, I sort of didn't have a joining one and it will be fine because no one's going to be looking at all of your ferns. You just don't want on this type of fern to have staggered um, petals or need, I guess these are called needles. I'm really not sure. You know, normally I do research and I just didn't get a chance to research ferns online like I used to, like I usually do. I usually research my plant. So I'm just going down and down, getting bigger and bigger. Okay, if you notice, I went pretty slow there. Now I'm getting to the point where, okay, now we can pick up speed. Push, pull, lift. Always getting paint. I'm picking up some yellow this time, as well as the light green. Now, my brush is getting full of paint. If it gets too full, wipe it off, and because you want to have a nice chisel. So let me show you what I do when I'm painting. If I just start getting way too much paint, I just lightly pinch it between in my paper towel and uh, pull out the excess paint and then I see still have a chisel edge. But I want to show you also, when you do that, here's my yellow side and then here's my, well, it's yellow green, yellow light green, and then here is my dark green side. So even though I wiped off the excess paint, I still am fully loaded inside that brush that all the, there's still a lot of paint in those bristles. So I'm still good. I don't have to wash it. I don't have to start a new runway or anything. Um, I can just now dip into my dark green, dip into my light green and go back onto my existing runway. And here I was dipping into that yellow a little bit. So that's what happens, if, especially if you dip in the wrong color. Happens a lot. Okay, so here we go again. You know what, I, I need to add more green too. For these kind of strokes, for the daisy and the comma stroke, I do sort of like to have a little blob of paint at the top. I really like, I really like to see a lot of paint. When it dries, it looks so neat. See, do you, can, can you see how much paint I have on the those petals or needles? So that when they dry, they're gonna dry almost with dimension. It looks really, to me, it looks really nice. Okay, so here I come, and I'm just going to stroke right on down. Like I said, I could go a little faster now, but I don't want to go too fast because I want everyone to be comfortable with speed. I, I want everyone to know that we don't have to be speed painters, which I'm not. <laughs> And I uh, always going back and getting more paint. See the nice blending in this? It just really, it's just really gorgeous. And everyone loved this fern project. And like I said, you can um, do it with just multi-surface paint. We didn't need, we didn't need to um, throw the book away because we don't have HD paint anymore. So I'm almost done just going down the edge here. It's getting bigger and bigger, but can you see how chalking in the guidelines will help? It keeps your keeps your fern in the size that you need. 
two more strokes and then we'll stop here. Okay, now two more strokes. Okay. And I'll go ahead and stop here. So, okay, so this is the fern and um, experiment with this, you know, see if you can get even a little tighter. And if that works for you, like the little tighter curl, you don't have to stick with the number 10 brush. Go ahead and use a smaller brush here and then just get your, as you work up to about like right here, you can switch to your 10. But, but again, notice this was with a 10 brush and this was with a 10 brush. And the strokes that I sort of said I was going to highlight on this was the comma stroke. And then, like I said, number 10 flat. I, again, I, I made a pattern. Now this time I didn't make a, an outline how big I wanted because it's going to stay within the stem. So it's, it's not that important to do outside edges, but I, I did trace my stem and that's what I'm going to do right now real quick for you on the chisel edge leading with the light green I'm just going to come down and paint my main stem right here now I do know for a fact oh now I'm going to just paint these little the side stems I'm just on the chisel edge but I do want to say when we first painted this we didn't have all of these little side stems because every, every one is going to be different. And I just happened for today to, for quickness of class and ease, I just traced what I did on this, this, but I, but this is the kind of project you do not need to have a pattern. You just want your stem placement, the big one. Okay. Now I can put the brush in away. To, um, while that dries, let me just go over the filbert brush a little bit. To load this brush, I, and I'll go ahead and you still use the dark green and, you know what, I'm going to go into moon yellow. On one side of my brush, on the side of the puddle of paint, I'm going to stroke to one side of my brush. The other side doesn't have paint. Then on that other side, I'm going to stroke here, get some paint on that side. And so now I got green on one side, um, yellow on the other side. Okay, so how do you use this brush? I this is how I use it. I use gentle pressure. I touch and I push. It's a gentle push. I'm only pushing like, let me see if I see, maybe like a third down. So that's my push and I push and then I'm going to start lifting up onto my chisel. But as I lift, I'm rotating my brush to the, in this case, to the left and I'm on the chisel edge and I pick up. When I say rotating, I am literally rotating it in my hand. I'm not turning my wrist. Um, I'm not twisting it. I'm just letting the brush rotate. So I'm touching, I'm pushing gentle. Then I immediately pick up, moving lightly to my chisel edge, rotating the brush and then picking up in, and, and you get that little, that little point right there. Now, of course you can make a bigger point, but what we're making, I, I think of them as little, like little buttons. <laughs> So I don't want, you know, like a lot of big stems. I'm just going to lightly push, immediately start picking up my brush, rotating it in my hand to the chisel and picking up. And you all see that, how just, just push and don't move it, just push. And then while you're still in that puddle of paint right there, come up to the chisel and ro you're rotating as you're coming up to the chisel and then pick up and you get that cute little ending right there. Okay, here we go again. So I, I push and I st start lifting up on my chisel, rotating it in my hand and I pick up. Now, 
that's what we're going to do. Let me see if I can make a bigger one. You know, I didn't even practice that today. Okay, you yes. Okay, so how if you need a longer one, which which you may at some point, what you would do is you'd push, and this time you can pull a little bit, but as you're pulling, letting it rotate in your hand, same rotation. Now I'm up on the chisel and I pull out pull out the stem. It goes faster. It goes better when you go a little faster like that. Okay, so I think we're good on that. So now let's go to our firm. And I'll keep it right here so you can see. And once you got it, you can these go fast. These are one of those strokes that I say you don't have to think about. I'm always going to have the um I'm going to put the yellow on top because I want more green to show. So it's it's push, turn, lift. For some reason, it seems like I'm getting more of the yellow showing. Okay, but uh, so let me not talk about color. <laughs> it just push, push, then I let it rotate in my brush and I come up to a point. And I'm just going to walk down the stem, adding these little, these to me they're like little button petals. So I'm, I'm pushing, I'm rotating in my hand, and then coming up to a point. And I'm just walking down that. And this is, so this is two stems. Now that looks odd. It's like I have one stem and I got two on that. But then I got this one over here. So it's not like I don't panic and say, oh no, I can't do anything because I got a, a pedal right there. No, I'm just going to, you know, just write, paint right over it. It's, it's not important that I'm painting over one and not the, and uh, covering up something. That's what happens. Uh, but I do want to say when you paint these, those other ferns that we painted, the points all touched together as we came down the stem, these are not like that. These are um, staggered. So like there's my first one. My second one is going to be here. Then my third one I'm going to stagger down here. So they're more like this as we come down the stem. And um, I'm just going to throw a couple in here so you guys still can see it, what we're doing. And you'll just have fun with this. Throw some in the middle of the... Um, the main stem and what I'll do is I'll just go down and add some I'm losing my nice colors I'll just go down and add some and then when I'm all done I come back and look and see okay where am I missing things that one was bad where am I missing some spots and then I come and fill them in. So, um, as you see this, don't go, oh no, she's leaving a gap. It, it will get full. I just added some yellow. Yeah, they were too, they were too blended. Didn't like that. I want to see the yellow and the green. Just coming it down here. But I hope, um, yeah, I, I explained this clearly for you all. I was watching, um, I think it was a Relax and Learn from 2001 that Donna did, and it was with this silver brush, and she, she did a lot of flowers. You can do so many things with this. We're just doing these little button strokes. But oh my goodness, they make such cute flowers. This this brush, I should say. So you can do a lot of things with this brush. But you can go look. There, she had two. There was one from 2020, but there was one from 2021. And that's the one I watched. It was the more recent one, so I watched that one. It was really cute, the flowers and stuff that she did. But I'm hoping, you know, my demonstration 
gives a clear understanding of how to use this brush. I'm just, you know, not doing the flowers. That one got a little messy. I, I'm going too fast. I'm a slower painter. There we go. But that's, that's sort of cute, huh? This one had a little bit more. But for demo purposes, so you all know what to do, this, this should be good. And um, Andy Jones always has an expression. What, and I, I can't remember it was a Southern expression. Some of you guys out there that watched Andy, what does he say? Like, don't, don't putsy or something? Or um, there's, some, there's something that he says, like, when you're done, you're done. You know, leave it alone. And so I'm, I'm, at, I'm almost at that point. You know, if you get too much, then it gets all, a little messy. But I, I could add one right here, right there. Okay. So I'm going to stop in there. But that's that fern.